Basically, here it is, the very first thing I wrote for Shuggy Bane, which strangely enough is the heart of the story. It's a chapter that comes right in the, the middle of the book. But it came to me almost fully formed uh, as a visual piece of cinema. And it's the, the chapter that deals with the two brothers walking across the abandoned coal mine where they go searching for copper wire. That was a thing that I used to do as a kid. We would go to the old, uh, the old mine and we would find copper wire. We would strip it and then you'd be able to sell the copper for a little bit of money. But I could see this almost as a, as a piece of cinema. I could feel all the textures. I could feel the slag dust pushing into the shoes and in between the socks. And I could remember how it tasted and how everything felt. And if the book is quite a Technicolor novel, this actually was a moment where everything fades to black and white and where it just becomes the two brothers uh, in this all this isolation. And what was interesting about the first draft of the novel is I wrote it all out of sequential order because I wasn't quite sure what I was working on in the first draft and I didn't want to lose the thread of inspiration. So I wrote the scenes as they came to me. I, I'm actually a writer that didn't graduate from a creative writing course. I went to art school. I studied fashion and textiles. And so I've always been processing the world in quite a visual way, thinking about imagery and, and how things look and touch and feel. That's really the textiles inspiration. And so I wrote chapters as they, as they came. And, and this one here, um, really formed the whole novel because it set so much in terms of, of tone and time. And there are all over this page actually my notes uh, for the first draft, but actually also my husband's notes. Because for the 10 years that it took me to write the book, the only person who read it was my husband. I was so... Um, I was teaching myself my craft. I was learning how to be a writer as I wrote Shuggy Bane. But I think I was also looking for permission from the world and I wasn't sure that someone from the working class of Glasgow, like myself, could be a writer. I felt like it was a very privileged industry, that it was a very closed elite space. And so a lot of those 10 years was really sort of getting up the courage to share my work with the world. But part of the first draft that was that was really challenging is because I didn't know what the novel would be. It actually became about 1800 pages um, and it is single spaced as you can see. And so it was a really thick, uh, a really thick book. And through much of the rest of the years, it was about editing back and finding the story at the heart of it and really a process of excavation, um, which I think many writers go through. It's very different to my second novel because I knew for my second novel to approach it with a plan and with an outline. Um, but I was very grateful of the journey that, that Shuggy took me on. And every time you work on a draft of a novel, and I think Shuggy must have got into the high 20s uh, in terms of drafts, you know, everything changes. One change to a single sentence, to a frame, to a, to a word changes things in every other paragraph, every other part of the novel. So it's a very living document. It's a, it's a thing where, uh, to use, I suppose, a textiles metaphor, to pull one thread will have an effect elsewhere. And, and I, I was very conscious of that. And so the first line <clears throat> reads in the first draft, and this is the very first thing I wrote, uh, the black slag hills stretched far and wide like the waves of a petrified sea. But as the, the novel advances and as uh, I learn about economy and about tightening things, I take out some of the words that weren't necessary. And by the third draft, it becomes the black slag hills stretch for miles like the waves of a petrified sea. It was just much clearer and punchier than far and wide. But then by the time we get to the final version, it changes Actually, it doesn't change. It remains exactly the same. So it's the black slag hills stretch for miles like the waves of a petrified sea. But everything is always uh, changing in the novel. And I think uh, editing is one of the, you know, when you write the first draft of something, you're really, as a novelist, telling yourself the story first. And you're finding out the heart of something. You're really trying to see what it is you're, you're getting at. And then throughout the rest of the process, you're excavating that story. As I said, you're, you're trying to make it as tight and as bright and as alive as it can feel.